Welcome to the breakdown where we break down all the messed up shit. Okay, so uh, three weeks, no vids. It's a lot to explain, so I'll explain more to it later, but we're back now. And the movie we're doing today is An American Crime, the second adaption based on the murder of Sylvia Likens. The last movie we did about her was very loosely based on the crime, called The Girl Next Door. But this movie is definitely more, I guess, true based, is that the word? I'm saying it documents the Sylvia Likens torture and murder very correctly. My dumbass can't even talk today. But as you can see, it stars my old crush Ellen Page as Sylvia Likens, who also played the pedophile vigilante in hard candy so if you want to see what happens including all the messed up parts stay tuned for the breakdown The movie starts off with a voiceover from young American girl Sylvia Likens, speaking of her love of the carnival, thanks to her carnival working parents. It's made apparent that the carnival is the place where Sylvia and her sister Jenny feel the most safe and comfortable. Then we cut to the future, at the trial for a very sinister crime. Here is Sylvia's pops, who is called to the stand explaining that after separation with his wife back in July 1965, Sylvia and Jenny were under the super vision of their mother Betty. Lester even visits his two daughters before they go to church. But it seems his interest is to rather put off the two girls to a relative so that he and Betty can work on career opportunities. Of course, Sylvia senses this true feeling but joins her sister back in church where we see this family put into the spotlight, especially when the mother, Gertrude Benizewski, can't calm her baby down. After church on the church bus, some of Gertrude's or Gertie's daughters finally meet the Lycan sisters, discovering that Jenny has polio. The daughters also influence the two to hang out with their family. This is where we see big sister Paula, who hints that the Benizewski family is having tons of financial trouble. Gertie lets her daughter and friends hang, but Paula and Sylvia seems to get closer like two peas in a pie going down to the grocery store to meet Paula's boyfriend. Before they see him though, they see Harry Oz, excuse me, it's just Gertie's ex-boyfriend named Andy. We will see him more later. Well, Paula shows her boyfriend, who is actually some married guy. Sylvia herself only had one little boyfriend back in California and is relatively clowned for being kind of pure and unexperienced. Back at Gertie's house, Lester Likens comes in looking for his two daughters. Lester and Gertie chat, where he jokefully reveals his feelings of wanting to leave his kids under somebody else for a bit. This is where Gertie sees opportunity for money, offering to keep them in addition to her six kids, as long as Lester pays $20 a week. That's very useful money for the financially troubled family. Back to the future, the lawyer here roasts Lester for even considering leaving his daughters with a complete stranger, showing he did accept that deal. The two parents leave their daughters with the Benizewski family, who happily accept the Lycan sisters into their home. Later in August, Paula shows Sylvia around the new school, where Paula must be the baddest or one of the most popular. I don't know, maybe just around the delinquents. Sylvia is catching eyes too though, getting macked on by Ricky Hobbs here, who throws his shot, but Sylvia plays hard to get. Back at the Benazuski household, Andy visits his baby here, but otherwise is hoping to have a little fun before he has to go to boot camp. He also wants some money so he can visit a brother of his, but when she gets on his case for not even supporting his kid, she gets slapped. Well, of course she accepts his apology, and they get right to sex. After the sex, she lets him have the $20 that Lester gave for the first week. Later at dinner time, which consists of this sandwich, Paula comes home late and is very angry about that married boyfriend of hers. Gertie talks to her, but when Paula talks back, she gets slapped. It's just a tense scene, really. But in the background, one of her sons is being cruel and not feeding this dog, barely letting him get a bite. Sylvia later learns from Paula herself that she is pregnant and tells Sylvia, don't tell anybody until I figure out what I gotta do. Later the mail comes, but it is missing the much needed $20 that Lester was supposed to give every week. The kids all come home and they are told to go upstairs, except for the Lycan sisters, who are all told to go down to the basement. She tells them the check didn't come through, believing she took care of them for nothing. She tells them both to lean over, first beating Jenny, who falls down from the pain and the presence of polio. 
Sylvia tells Gertie she will take her beating and is hit twice by the angry lady. I mean, I got whoopings as a kid too, but my grandma ain't never hit me like she was starting off a round of tennis. She tells Sylvia she needs that money before leaving the two girls to gather their thoughts. Later, we see the check has came in and a little note written by the parents. Then we see Sylvia hanging out with Paula and her delinquent friends who are smoking and drinking all types of beer. Paula leaves to go talk to her married boyfriend, but then the homeboy Ricky comes to fix the awkward mood. Sylvia then hears Paula and her guy arguing and goes to investigate. She solid snakes her way around, but once he gets forceful, Sylvia tries to help by saying she's pregnant. This does get him to calm down and retreat, but Paula gets angry because she opened her mouth about the pregnancy and tells Sylvia she will pay for this. That's some, that's ridiculous. I mean, that dude looked like he was gonna rape her even when people watched. But you mad at Sylvia? Whatever. Sylvia also tells Ricky off for following her. You know anger travels. Back at home, Paula confides in her mother, but also has some dirty ass shit coming out of that funk booty mouth of hers. But Sylvia was sick. She's telling horrible lies about me. Telling everyone I'm a slut. You should have seen her with those boys telling everyone I was a slut. <laughs> Y'all ever just like shrivel your shrivel your face up in response to some bullshit you just heard? Cause right now I feel like Paula needs that whooping that Likens got earlier. Telling lies to make herself feel better. Later after church, Gertie forces Sylvia to apologize for some shit she didn't even say and also lets Paula get even. Sylvia is held back and slapped by Paula, but then they get into a bigger conflict, which ends with Sylvia getting hit so hard that Paula hurts her wrist. Then the kids are sent back up, including the sad Jenny and hurt Sylvia. Even though there is unfair treatment, it's good to see the Lycan sisters keep their strength by reciting prayers together, even in the darkness of night. Later, we see Sylvia stuck in the recesses of her mind, but then this Steven Rogers looking ass dude named Eric comes to shoot his interest at Sylvia like a truth bullet. It seems kind of cliche that a handsome type of guy talks to an innocent and quiet type of girl like Sylvia, but trust me guys, he is pretty cool. We also see that Paula's pregnancy is becoming well known throughout the whole school. Meanwhile, Ricky is hanging out with Gertie. Ricky is obviously going to be converted to the dark side. Later, Jenny shows Sylvia that note we saw earlier, but it was trashed by Gertie. This prompts the two to call their parents on a payphone. The two tell mommy that Gertie is way too strict, but they gotta hang up when Gertie's kids see them. In the house, Gertie questions where they got the money to make a call, thinking they stole it when in reality, they just traded empty Coke bottles for coins. Gertie drags Sylvia over, accusing her of lying and stealing, punishing her by burning her hand with a cigarette. The screams are overheard by the neighbors who opt to stay out of it. Later, the Benazuski family and the girls are at a church event. We see Paula has a cast now, and Sylvia is asked to hang out with Eric leaving Ricky in the dust. Sylvia also thinks maybe Ricky could have been that one to spread the rumors about the pregnancy. Ricky sits jealous as Sylvia goes off to hang with Eric, proving to be easy bait for Gertie to infect with her hate nonsense. Well, Sylvia is later dropped back off to the place she definitely wishes to avoid. Gertie again accuses her of spreading rumors and also flirting with Andy. As a terrible and embarrassing punishment, Sylvia is forced to stick a coke bottle inside of her, which breaks once the oldest sibling and her boyfriend come in. Then Gertie makes the boyfriend named Coy take her down to the basement, where Sylvia's screams are heard loud and clear by the neighbors who just ignore it. Sylvia is then pushed down the stairs in response to being too difficult. Our tortured soul later wakes up in pain and bewilderment, but finds some kind of peace in imagining herself where she always felt safe. At a family meeting, Jenny asks how long will Sylvia be in the basement, and Gertrude says until she learns her lesson. She also says that if anybody asks, Sylvia is in juvie. Paula then comes downstairs to bring water, but it also seems like she has started to feel some type of guilt for all the unfair things Sylvia is going through. I don't know if this was the case in real life, but later on, the kids bring their neighborhood delinquents to see Sylvia, 
boasting and showing how much abuse she has suffered, even burning her with cigarettes. The act of letting this neighbor girl burn her starts the montage of torture that Sylvia goes through. It goes hand in hand with the same kids on the stand describing what was done to her, such as punching, kicking, and overall incredible disrespect upon Sylvia. When Casey Nastiat, Nastiat, I don't know, asks each kid why they did what they did, they each say, I don't know, sir. Later, the church reverend comes by, apparently brought by Paula, who confided in him. He also came because he was worried about Sylvia and is told she is at juvie by this ugly, lying, goblin-ass woman. Gertie is increasing in anger and paranoia, all that type of shit, even causing a scene with Paula, revealing that she is doing all this for you. This meaning Sylvia's abuse. It's now October 23rd, and Gertrude sends everybody to the basement. In a fit of craziness, she writes the words in marker, I'm a prostitute and I'm proud of it on Sylvia's body. She then makes the kids heat up a bobby pin and uses it to start branding those words on Sylvia. Gertie can't finish it though, and of all people, she makes Ricky finish the message. Man, it sucks that these kids, Ricky especially, couldn't do what's right. I'll never understand what made any of these neighborhood kids so heartless towards Sylvia like that. Later that night, Paula comes to Sylvia's aid, helping her up through the basement and past the sleeping mother. But this damn coconut head ass girl snitches and Paula sends Sylvia running, saying she will take care of Jenny. Hmm, kinda surprising she even has the energy to talk, but she uses any strength she has to run away. Lucky for her, Ricky is just standing still for no reason and helps her into his car. Instead of the hospital, Sylvia wants him to take her to where her parents are. Well, Ricky does what he is told, and Sylvia is dropped off at the carnival where they work at. Ricky is then told to go back to make sure Jenny is okay. The parents see the full extent of Sylvia's injuries, and they all gear up to go save Jenny. Next, they are back at the house, and the parents for some reason let Sylvia go inside by herself, like it's something only she could do. Now, if you haven't noticed or put two and two together, this is some dream Sylvia is having. Sylvia never escaped, she died there. This ghostly Sylvia sees her own dead body on the floor as each kid panics around. They finally get some responsibility, ignoring their mother to call for help. When the police arrive, Jenny says she will tell them everything. Now we are at the trial. Jenny painfully explains her fear of Gertrude, who takes the stand last in the 24th day of the trial. She lies about all the abuse, even saying her kids lied about everything just shows how careless and inhuman she is. Meanwhile, Sylvia's ghost speaks about the evil of Gertrude, who is then sentenced to life in prison for first degree murder. Paula went to jail too, and this kid Johnny and Ricky went to a reformatory. Ricky though, so happened to die himself from lung cancer at the age of 20. Jenny is left again under the care of the district attorney's family. But later, we hear that Gertrude got released 20 years later, but died just five years after her release. The movie ends as Sylvia's ghost wanders around the place she always felt safe, the carnival. Well, this was the second film we covered that was based on the murder of Sylvia Likens. Now, it was definitely less graphic than The Girl Next Door, but I'm glad it didn't get too gritty. What they showed in this movie seems extremely watered down to what she actually went through in the care of Gertrude. But if they showed all of that, I feel in a way it would be disrespectful to Sylvia Likens herself. Now that we've seen what happened in an American crime, let's talk about the most disturbing moment and most enjoyable moment in that spooky stuff. So honestly, I'm kind of looking at the Girl Next Door film a bit weird now. It's striking me as disrespectful to Sylvia for some reason. Now, I'm sure some of you watch crime videos or murder mystery videos or whatever, and I'm also sure y'all would watch a video based on the murder of Sylvia Likens. So I suggest y'all check out a video made by the channel Make Me Believe. It's titled Dissecting Murder Sylvia Likens, and I'll put the link in the description. What I most like about his videos is he does not pull punches. He will talk about a murder and will show you like all the graphic crime scene photos and everything. 
So if you're ready for that, then check them out. So back to our video. The most disturbing moment is probably the branding. I mean, everything was messed up. I guess a close second is probably the forced bottle torture. It's just, you know, the faces that Sylvia made was very sad to watch. The most enjoyed moment is when Sylvia and Jenny were praying at night. It was very heartwarming to see how she kept her strength through prayer and also just simply being next to her sister. And that's it. Now on the left is the video I mentioned earlier. Check him out and he will show what really makes this crime so infamous. On the right is the girl next door in case you want to see that weird adaption of it. But regardless, thanks for watching. Spooky out.